Hi, I'm Marvin Landwehr and I'm presenting the paper Community Supported Agriculture, the concept of solidarity in mitigating between harvest and needs, which is based on a participatory action research on this community supported agriculture in Bungeng, which is a village in the south of Germany. So the research question raised by us, not by the cow you see in the picture, was uh, what solidarity principles underpin community agriculture in Bugging and what exchange mechanisms or currencies might support this. Okay, but why even care? We are convinced that small-scale food producers are core actors for sustainability and community-supported agricultures in particular challenge the basic assumptions of capitalism and consumerism. And this is making them a good object to study for sustainable HCI research. A quick wrap up of what community supported agricultures are. So they consist of a group of members that become effectively harvest stakeholders. They guarantee to pay the calculated annual expenses for the farm in advance and in turn the harvest is distributed among them. In oftentimes uh, community supported agricultures apply principles of biodynamic agriculture and seek ideals of food sovereignty. In many cases, shares don't have a fixed price, but members can pay what they think as long as it's enough in aggregate. And members also voluntarily contribute with their work. And finally, uh, as a legal entity, they are usually cooperatives. The community supported agriculture where did the field work fulfilled all of these properties. And here are some facts about its size. But what's making the Luzernhof special is that in contrast to most community-supported agricultures, they achieved a demand orientation and they also invented their own currency and called it Luzern. What we found was this. Whereas usually community-supported agricultures provide the harvest to the members in boxes of equal shares, the Luzernhof uses a rather elaborated Google Spreadsheets document where the members are listed in the rows and the columns uh, are all the available food items and by writing into this spreadsheet members make orders which are then delivered to their closest pickup location once a week. As a consequence members have a kind of free product choice which links back to the demand orientation that I just mentioned. But they also have indefinite share sizes. A member could in theory not only pay little for their share but they could also much <coughs> order much more than others though this is within some limits, but these limits mainly address uh, the scarce products and most for most of the products there are no limits. Due to these properties, one would expect a high level of trust among the members. However, it turned out that the members barely knew each other, but they do trust the farm, as the farm consistently is providing them with high quality food. And the farm also trusts the members, so in the sense that the farm is a trust mediator, for the strong trust that is required for such a system to work. I'd like to highlight one of the CSA aspects I mentioned, namely food sovereignty. As a coincidence, the fieldwork fell into the beginning of the COVID crisis, so I could observe how the community supported agriculture structures turned out to be indeed way more resilient. However, when we consider technological sovereignty as one aspect of food sovereignty, as I mentioned, the core component of the ordering system is the Google spreadsheet. You might consider this as a lightweight solution, but if we consider this in terms of technological sovereignty, we can see that this dependence on the certain cloud service provider can become problematic in the future. In the paper, you will also find a discussion of the currency which turned out to be only an optional addendum to the ordering system that they came up with for mitigating between harvest and needs. But talking about trust intermediation, technological sovereignty and currency innovation suggests maybe also talking about blockchain. <laughs> Before the field work, my expectation was that it might be a good idea to develop their currency further into a means of payment, possibly even a cryptocurrency, but this was not supported by the findings. Nor do we think that blockchain would be a fit for their technological needs in other directions. But 
we argue that neither central server structures would be. So we sense an opportunity here for distributed ledger technology. If you want to know why, uh, I recommend just reading the paper. Thank you very much for your attention.